Hey everyone, so this video is about buying a business, like a private business that has a lot of assets versus one that is capital light. So let's go through my thinking around this and how this is influencing my search at the moment. So I thought assets were actually a really good thing at first because you've got a liquidation event. Like if, let's, say you, let's say you mess everything up and you've got $800,000 worth of uh, gear, equipment that you could sell. And let's say you paid... I don't know, a million for the business, right? Hypothetically. It's kind of like a bit of a get out of jail free card. Like you've got a, the thing's not going to go to zero. You're going to, you've got low downside risk if you've got all these assets. So whether it's in machinery or in trucks or in whatever it is, you've got, it sounded nice to have these assets as a bit of a safety net, especially for someone like me who's buying their first acquisition, who's, you know, has some has some doubts in their own abilities and things like that. Maybe having having that safety net it's going to be cool. The other thing that could be very helpful with having assets would be that you can use them to borrow money against for a second acquisition. So let's say you buy this business and, you know, it's actually doing quite well and you're starting to grow things, but, you know, you want to add on another business in the same space, for example, a similar size business, but you can then use the machinery, the $800,000 to go out and get a loan for, you know, that's used as collateral to go out and get a loan to then go buy that second business. And then you can leverage the assets to go and scale up. I think that's pretty cool and pretty attractive. But the problem is that with having assets and machinery and trucks and things like that, unfortunately, CapEx costs can blow up just to maintain operations. So for example, let's say you had a very important $300,000 piece of machinery that was manufacturing the particular product that you're selling, right? If something goes wrong with that machine, let's say it's down for a little while and you need to get uh, some serious replacement parts, $50,000 worth, $100,000 worth, that's something that is just going to come out of the blue. And you're not going to be able to budget for that very well. You're not going to, like, you can look back in, in time, but look, machines, trucks, stuff like this, this stuff breaks, this stuff can get really expensive. Maybe you have to replace the gear. And that stuff can really hurt cash flow. And it's something that, it's quite a headache. So I ask myself, when I'm looking at these businesses that do have assets, well, what's the risk of making a serious capital capital expenditure in the next five years? And if I don't know that answer, well, that makes it really hard to look look further into this business. There's a business that I looked at quite carefully and they were making steel dished ends for the oil and gas industry, essentially. So you know how like on the back of a truck where they're, where they're transporting like oil or gas, there's those big kind of bullet looking tube things, the steel ends are the ends of those cylinders, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, this business had about probably $2 million worth of uh, machinery and you could buy the business for about 800000 So you're like, oh, that sounds like an amazing deal. I could just buy this business and if something goes wrong, I could liquidate everything. But that's not really how it works. It was replacement value was the $2 million. The liquidation would only be like 500000 just because it's steel and probably, but that's if the thing broke. So it wasn't as good as a deal as, you, as, I, as I said. The problem is this thing was really old, 40, 50 year old, had been doing a great job and you maintain it relatively well, but these things can break and that can just make a huge problem. If you've got only $200,000 of profit to work with and, and you have to spend $300,000 on a machine in the first year, well, unfortunately, you're pouring more money into the business. And that's what happens in capital cap X high businesses is you can get unlucky and you have to fork out a lot more money early on in the business. And that's something that I don't want to do. So I'm a bit nervous about that. And then you also have to think about it from a, like a return on assets point of view. There was a commercial laundry that I was looking at and it had $800,000 worth of gear, but the business was only profiting 150,000 or so something like that. So the return on those assets is what, I don't know, um, 15, 15%, 20%, something like that. That seems like a reasonable return on assets, but I haven't factored in the maintenance costs and replacement costs of any of those things break. And that's what I, that's the variable that you have to think about when you're thinking about like businesses with serious assets. So, so after saying all that, it's something that, yeah, I see some positives, but I see a lot more negatives. And it's just, I want a very capital light business now. That's what I'm going to focus my continual search for a private business. That's what I'm focusing on is it's got to be capital light because it's just one less thing to screw me over essentially. So 
yeah, anyway, along this journey, uh, I do have a backup plan, which is my savings in my Interactive Brokers account. So I'm still very interested in investing in the stock market, which is what my channel has been about historically. And yeah, I'll still be doing some videos on that moving forward as well. Interactive Brokers is where I keep it all. Link in the description for that. And yeah, definitely the safest broker out there. And yeah, I hope you're enjoying these videos on my acquisition search journey. And I'm getting closer and closer all the time. And I'm turning over a lot of rocks to find a private business. And I'm I'm soon going to be able to reveal that I'm getting actually really close on a deal. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Hope you're enjoying. Hope you're enjoying the view. I'll see you in the next video.